one, go. Hi, um, good, good morning and welcome. Uh, and for our audience, we're, we're having a conversation here. And so first of all, I would like you to introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what we would call uh, a, a biography. Sure. Thank you ever so much, Jay, for giving me this opportunity um, to talk to you about my experiences and share some of my story um, with your audience. Um, basically, my name's uh, Will Evans. I'm the uh, founder of a business called Living Without Spurges. I'm also a director of Hidden Abilities, which we can talk more about. Um, but basically, my story is at the age of 18, I was misdiagnosed with bipolar personality disorder to later find out that not only was it a misdiagnosis, but actually I had Asperger's. Um, and we can talk more about what the impact um, of the misdiagnosis was and how that has shown up in my life. And uh, I'm really excited to be here and to share. That, that's wonderful. Th th thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. That's interesting that you say uh, th there has been a misdiagnosis. Um, I've heard that elsewhere. A lot of people yes. have been misdiagnosed with a lot of things. Yes. Do, do you feel comfortable in sharing? Of with course. Us? Yeah. No. Please. Sorry. What was the question? You... The, the question is: is um, you, you did say that there was a misdiagnosis? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, so something was mis was diagnosed yeah. as something else. Yes. And and uh, that is because. Uh, someone else has made the right that, the right diagnosis, or you thought to yourself, "One, well, I yeah. don't recognise this as a." So basically, you're, you're absolutely right, Jay. You know, it's very common for people to be misdiagnosed with bipolar or personality disorder when actually um, it's an autistic um, spectrum. As a uh, psychologist, you'll understand that the you know the the the, the signs are so similar. And actually the only real difference is whether or not the difficulty was, um, you know, at the beginning of life at, during the milestones, um, you know, if those difficulties are present um, when the milestones are there, then it tends to be an autistic. So basically if it's a lifelong condition, it's an autism or autistic spectrum. If it comes later on in life, then they tend to um, put it as a mental health condition. Um, so basically, yes, I, at the age of 18, I was diagnosed with bipolar personality disorder. And then uh, about 20 years later, um, a psychologist um, started uh, saying to me that some of the uh, difficulties that I were having weren't necessarily um, linked to what you would expect with um, bipolar personality disorder and suggested um, that we had a look or that it was possible that I was actually on the autistic spectrum. Um, and then when we got myself tested, that very much came out. But you're absolutely right. I've heard it so many times um, that people have been misdiagnosed and I personally, this is only my own belief, even though there are so many people out there with the symptoms of bipolar and personality disorder, I think it's a label. Um, I think it's people just being misdiagnosed. Um, and I think it's just so often and easy um, for people that really don't understand just to be said that, you know, um, you are bipolar. What that actually means, again, um, is quite unclear. Thank you for that one. Um... My, as, as you were saying that, that's really interesting because I've heard it uh, elsewhere. As you were saying that, my, in, inside my head, I'm, I'm thinking th there is a question here. And, and, and the question is, um, how, do you, how do you personally feel um, about these names, whether they are, oh. you know, bipolar or, yeah. or, or autistic or the spectrum yeah. or this, that? Do you feel that there's anything or are you, are you completely comfortable with all these names sure. you know, being, being mentioned, especially by others? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, when I uh, got diagnosed with bipolar personality disorder, I was actually in prison. Um, and I just remember turning around and asking, you know, the doctor or, you know, the person who's giving me the diagnosis, who had only met me for 20 minutes, um, what that actually meant. And he turned around and told me, what do you think personality disorder there's something wrong with your personality so fundamentally for a very very long time I felt I was broken I felt that there was something wrong with me um, and that very much played out in my life it, you know it, it meant that I wasn't able to engage with people it means that I wasn't able to engage with society um, and it, it definitely had uh, you know a huge 
um, negative effect on my confidence and how I viewed myself. Um, however, again, with the, you know, the, the diagnosis of autism, um, you know, again, yes, it's a label, but it helped me understand um, why I have some of the gifts and why I have some of the benefits, but also have some of the challenges, um, you know, and I think that for me, uh, the day I got diagnosed with Asperger's was the happiest day of my life. It just suddenly meant I made sense and I no longer had to be confined by that false diagnosis of bipolar personality disorder. And I just hope that, you know, people will be able to see, um, you know, the, 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 the label of autism as a gift, because I believe that's exactly what it is. Um, but I can actually understand, you know, how it can um, have a limiting uh, effect. I understand that it, it can have it can have a limiting effect, uh, and in that you know for, for for a number of years a lot of people have been mm. have been either diagnosed or misdiagnosed, uh, and you know it, it can go on for years because yes. nothing happens yes. in between. Um, you know, twenty years in 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 our case from the ages of eighteen to thirty eight, uh, as as you mentioned earlier, but then. You know, then then life takes a turn, and and you you know there's a realization, for instance, that it's you know that everything, that all the symptoms and 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 everything that that is happening in in, in one's life is is more is more like Asperger's than anything else, mm. uh, because like you said, there are certain abilities, and uh, and and we will we will talk about those certain abilities and there's this genius that's waiting that's always there waiting to come yeah. out yeah and, and that that is not you know that is not conforming to uh, to to the label of or or, or the diagnosis of, of bipolar mm. one feels uh, and so so I would imagine the, the part of your life was very much taken up with with with, with those with those areas where you were diagnosed with one yeah. and then and then eventually uh, uh, became so so did that make a material difference in terms of how you saw yourself as, as, as an adult yes absolutely absolutely I mean when I was actually diagnosed they actually turned around and said I'd never live a, a normal life I would never engage with society in a positive way I'd never um, hold down a job and I would never um, you know build um, you know, personal, meaningful relationships. Um, and that was my reality for, you know, 20 odd years, um, you know, pretty much up to the time you said until I was about 38, um, when I got the diagnosis of Asperger's. And then very much the way I saw myself um, was different. And it also changed the way people saw me as well, um, if that makes sense. And uh, it, it really has, um, you know, made such a difference on a daily basis. Um, I, you know, feel so much happier in myself. Um, you know, I'm able to make sense of why I had all the difficulties, you know, before. Um, so, for example, if I was getting on a bus and I was sitting, I'd never understand body space. Um, so because of that, I'd always invade people's space, which meant that I'd get quite a, an aggressive reaction. and I could never understand that. Um, but now I know that I can. Ah, that's why they're reacting like that. Or that's why I'm having this difficulty, um, you know, and now I actually use it and it's turned into real positive. You know, people find it quite intriguing that, you know, there's somebody that is as articulate as I am but still doesn't necessarily understand the nuances um, of social engagement. And, you know, I, I've now managed to turn that into a real positive thing and quite an endearing um, aspect of myself, I think. I, I, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it can become something that, that you know, that can be a, um, a, a challenge or, mm. or a, um, a, a hindrance um, once understood. Yeah. And once the realization is there, yeah. uh, and once the, we're given the tools and the education and the know how, Absolutely. then it, it, it's changed. I mean, you know, the, the, this notion of space, for, for, for instance, it can be sometimes it's, a, it's not just what we call socialization, i.e., the, the, the social uh, element of it, but it can also be cultural because in certain, yeah. in certain cultures, that does, you know, the, the, no one has said, 
that you need to keep a, a, a distance from others. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that doesn't exist. So uh, it, it's okay to correct a behavior or yeah. to correct, or, or to correct a, 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 a social interaction yeah. As long as you're aware of it. If someone tells you what you need... You there know, you go. That's uh, it. It's the uh, not being aware of it. I mean, I've had times where um, I went through a, 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 quite a long period of coaching and stuff where I'd go out into social situations every night trying to push myself. And I'd get, you know, quite harsh reaction. I was told I was weird. Um, and I'd ask them, like, why am I weird? Break it down for me. And there were times that, you know, they'd just end up running away or, you know, tend to off or what have you um but it's the not knowing that people find difficult if you kind of understand it then you're able to kind of change it and what i find really interesting is going back to that point of culture um we i was very privileged to spend some time in australia a couple of years ago and when i was out there because i was a tourist they were a lot more understanding and accepting when you didn't necessarily understand you know, the culture where in this country, because obviously I'm from Britain, um, there's that expectation that we should know, if that makes sense. And uh, my kind of directness that I get, that I think is amazing, but a lot of people see as cheeky or, um, you know, especially with the police and stuff like that, see that as me being confidential. So absolutely. And I think it's important to really emphasise, you know, it's not a case of my life is perfect. I still have difficulties. Yesterday I had a meltdown, the screen the shouting so I still get that um it just doesn't last as long where it would normally last for days if that kind of makes sense and I would just wipe me out for weeks now it was an hour and it's over and rather than beating myself up and the loathing and the why is this happening it now makes sense and that makes such a difference to me um, and other people as well uh, uh, excellent I mean it, it does make a huge difference to to, to, to everyone because you know, when when uh, when we do come to that realization, and you know, we, we go through what we go through, um, what we see, others do not necessarily see the same thing. Yeah, and and so you know, I mean, I'm 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 aware of that myself. Uh, uh, you know, and and what you're saying to us is really interesting because what we're saying here. Uh, something like uh, uh, changing the diagnosis makes a whole difference it does. from a label such as bipolar, yeah. which, which is very much, you know, the, the highs and the lows, yeah. the depression and the mania and the taking risks and so on. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's not easy to separate from, like you say, you know, the, the meltdown and, and, and everything else and, and the sensory and inputs and, and, and what goes it. on there. Uh, and, and so, you know, you, a whole portion, I would say, a good portion uh, um, of your time and your life skills and, and your life biography has been taken up by that. But I know from, from what we said uh, earlier on that you, you rose up to the challenge mm -hmm. and, and you, you, know, you turned, you turned you, you, every time you're confronted with, with a difficulty, you're able to deal with it and, and sure. come out even better. Yeah. And, and, and so now we're going to turn. So we kind of got a glimpse. We just got a flavor of, you know, of the, of the biography side of things and how, how really you've been defined by these two diagnoses and, and the fact that, uh, the, the, you know, having been told finally, yeah. that it's more akin to Asperger than anything else, then, then that made a huge difference. It does. In terms, yeah, in terms of professional skills mm. and professional abilities, could, could, you, could you share with us, if you wish, you know, what kind of career-wise, how did yeah. that impact on you of now course. that we know what we know? Sure, absolutely. And I think before I go on that one point, I think it's really important um, kind of to, to make um, is that with the bipolar, it's very much seen as the individual's responsibility. Um, and their answer to that is just to prescribe medication. You don't tend to get any level of support where with the Asperger's or the autism, it's um, seen very, very differently. And there is a lot more support um, available out there. So I think that's really key to um, kind of explain. Um, but going on to the point about, you know, work and what, you know, the, the skills and stuff. Um, so basically, I've had over 100 jobs. 
Um, you know, um, as you can tell, I'm very articulate. Um, so I was able to be very good at kind of building, um, you know, going and getting jobs and, uh, you know, persuading people to give me um, that, that chance. Um, my directness and openness in an interview was quite engaging with people. Um, so um, I was able to, you know, talk people into giving me that chance. And I think that just really shows that generally, people do want to help people. Um, I think the real difficulty is that when they would see me in an interview, the nerves, the anxiety and all that was, you know, they would just see that as normal and that it was because of it was in the interview. However, when they then started finding out that, you know, I dropped lots of plates, I'd knock in things, I didn't have a sense of, you know, time, um, you know, my bluntness would then start being seen um, as cheeky, if that kind of makes sense, not understanding the rules and expectations, um, then meant that usually within 24 hours, um, they would be coming and saying I was a lovely person, um, but I had driven them mad and insane and that you know that was the end of the job um and that would really i find that very very difficult to deal with not only was it the fact that i would be losing an income um you know the ability to earn money but then again yet again i was being rejected and told that i was no good at something instead of people um seeing um you know the good and the positive you know i had such a drive um and a desire to please to you know do a good job um and people just would not necessarily see that um and just see the problems um but i think that in regards to skills um you know my my, my ability to focus on things that interest me um is um, I think quite extraordinary. Um, I, if something interests me, like the Equality Act, I can spend hours and hours and hours just focusing on it. However, the flip side to that is, if it doesn't interest me, then you haven't got hope and hell of being able to focus me on it, whether or not it's something I need or not, it's just not something I'm able to do. Um, and that's kind of why you know self-employment very much um, works for me um, because I'm able to work in a way that suits me to a routine that suits me and to build a business around my passions um, and that's why I think that as soon as I went over to self-employment and set up my own business um, that it's really you know done well and especially with the support of access to work and other other benefits so uh, that, 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 that's amazing. I mean, you know, you, you hit it there on, on, on the head. It, it's very much about, you know, you, you did say, you know, you, you went through a uh, uh, hundred jobs uh, mm. uh, all, all together. And, and I mean, I can understand that some people misconstrue certain, you know, certain actions and, and reactions yeah. in a social setting and misread them. Yeah. Uh, you know, such as dropping plates and, 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 and sure. thinking, you know, that, that there's... Uh, there's something uh, that, that's a bit too blunt and, and, and so on. Um, but as, as you were saying that, as you were saying that, in, in my head, there's this question. And, and I'm thinking, OK, so, so, so you've had a few, you know, you, you were in a few jobs and, mm. and it's understandable before, before you settled in uh, on, on something that feels comfortable for you and that is self-employment. Yeah. And 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 I, I'm I'm thinking the question in my head was uh, is how were you able to deal with say working as part of a team? And sure. the second part of the question is how were you able to sort of uh, deal with with someone saying you know a, a team leader saying you need to do this or yourself sure. uh, saying you know giving it, an instruction to someone else. Yeah. How did that work out in a formal so it setting? <laughs> it, it really, yeah. really didn't. Um, so basically, part of my employment was I, I, I worked for one of the top supermarkets um, as a customer um, service manager, um, which was just a, a posh title uh, for a, a monkey or somebody that answered um, the phones. So there was um, a thousand people in the, the, the centre. Um, but within a couple of weeks, it became very clear that nobody wanted to speak to me. Nobody would engage with me. Nobody would speak to me because they just saw me as somebody who was very um, difficult and somebody who had a chip on their shoulder. Um, so that was really, really hard for me, if that makes sense. Um, I know that whenever managers um, usually, you know, especially the, the story of dropping the plates, 
one of the things that when a manager or somebody would turn around and say, you know, calm down or do this or can you do that? I'd be like, no problem, no problem. And that would be a real difficulty for them because they would be like, it is a problem. It's the 10th time I've spoken to you about it. So it is a problem. Please stop saying it's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, that's something I found really, really difficult. Um, I'd often go home and, you know, cry myself to sleep, if I'm honest. Um, there was a lot of, you know, uh, desire to self-harm and all etc cetera, etc cetera, because I just did not know how to emotionally deal with that um, and it just quite often came out in frustration um, I didn't understand why I was being rejected I didn't understand why I didn't fit in and I didn't understand why I didn't feel like I belonged um, and I know that a lot of those emotions were very very difficult I didn't really have anybody to talk to about them um, you know and it's not something you could really talk to people at work um, and most people at work didn't talk to me. But what I can turn around and tell you is that when we got the diagnosis um, of Asperger's and we had, you know, um, access to work funded, somebody to come in and explain to people um, about the challenges and the difficulties I had, that changed the whole environment. Um, all of a sudden, um, I became one of the most popular people. You know, everybody wanted to talk to me. Everybody wanted to engage with me because they understood that when they came in and say to me, hey, well, what's up? And when I turn around go to the ceiling, I wasn't being funny or difficult. I was just taking what they were saying literally. So it, it almost became intriguing for people. There was somebody else here that, you know, really wanted to saw the world differently but really wanted to engage with them. Um, and most people, you know, responded to that really, really well. Um, I managed with the, you know, with the help of a very good team leader um, and, you know, support workers and the access to work funding to actually, um, you know, with uh, additional equipment to go to the number one, um, one of the most productive employees. Um, and again, it, it, you know, there, there's, there's a documentary about it where, the team leaders were saying that when I first started there, I was only in work, or I wasn't in work for about 80%. So I was only in work about 20% of the time because of the difficulties that I was having. And then when we got the diagnosis and we got the right support in place and the right understanding, I was in work 100% of the time. And, you know, my stats went through the roof and I was engaging with people and my life just absolutely changed. Um, so, yeah, I hope that kind of, it, it, it does. Thank you for that. Uh, just, just one more question before we wrap up this session. Um, what, was there anyone uh, throughout who, without yourself having to let them know anything about uh, uh, yourself, who you felt you were able to, there could be more than one person, you were able to connect with, they kind of, they got you, they, they understood you, they you felt comfortable with them. Were there people like that? Um, I don't think so. I think part of the... I'm, I'm, I'm someone who's so open about my Asperger's. I love the fact that I have it and I celebrate it on a daily, uh, daily basis. Um, so I always tell people if that kind of makes sense. Um, but I, I, I think that... Um, if Honestly, I think... I would, I would say you probably, um, even though you know that okay. I have Asperger's, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Um, I, just, I just feel we have a connection, if that kind of makes sense. Um, yes. That, you know, just happened, you know, very, very quickly. Um, actually, if there is anybody, I would probably say Rob from Inspire, um, you know, even though he didn't necessarily, he knew I had Asperger's, um, but he didn't necessarily understand it. But yeah, he was just willing to accept me for who I am. Um, so yeah, I think that would be that, that is that is wonderful. I, I, I'm sure Rob would would be pleased to hear that. And and you know what? It's it, likewise. I mean, I feel this connection with you. I don't know what I don't know why, but I think sure. you know we kind of known each other for for, for a long time. It seems yeah. so. Um, it once so again, strange. yeah, and I, I really would like to, to thank you uh, very much for taking part in this. Hopefully, we will do more of these. Uh, this one was our first one, what we call a, a baseline, mm. and then we we'll, we will see how uh, uh, how we progress from that. Yeah. So thank you very much. I will stop the recording there, but please stay online. Thank you very much.